Chuck, I have some more explaining to do about the night sky. Explain away. Let's focus on the Big Dipper. When it gets dark, right? if you look north, you might notice the Big Dipper. All right. That's probably the most recognizable configuration of seven stars there is. Absolutely. There's three in the handle, four in the, in the pot. In the pot. In England, they call it the Big Saucepan. Have you seen the Big Saucepan? Do you know England? Uh-huh. The... Island, so I guess that there would be Great Britain. Great Britain. Great Britain sits entirely north of the northernmost spot of Maine. In England, they don't have skiing. <laughs> so what's up with that? Okay, so England is kept warm by sea currents that swirl from the Gulf all the way on up into the North Atlantic. Gotcha. Okay. And why am I saying that? Okay, because England is farther north which means the North Star is higher in their sky. Because Santa Claus, the North Star is directly over his head. And as you trudge south, which would be any direction from the North Pole. Every direction is south. Is south from the North Pole. Right. So if you trudge south, then the elevation above the horizon of the North Star gets lower and lower. Lower, lower and lower okay. as you go down. So England is farther north than every place in the United States. So the North Star is pretty high up, which means the Big Dipper is not really dipping. Here at our latitude, we're at New York City, right here in my office at the Hayden Planetarium, our latitude is 41 degrees north above the equator. What's Santa's latitude? Um, I guess zero. Oh, no, because we're on a, on a, no, yeah, right? His latitude, he can't have a latitude. He's at the very top, right? Equator is zero. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 180 or, or whatever that is. <laughs> Whatever the top part is. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. He's 90 degrees up. Right. Okay. So he's 90 degrees up. The North Star is straight up 90 degrees up. Okay. So the elevation of the North Star above the horizon is your latitude. Wow. That's how that works. That's, wow. That's good. That's, <laughs> that's good. pretty cool. That's hel uh, very helpful. Yeah. Okay. But that's only, that only happens there, right? No. New York City is 41 degrees north latitude okay. above the equator. Right. Okay. The North Star is 41 degrees above the horizon for us. Okay. Let's keep going south to the equator. Where's the North Star? If you're going, so 90 degrees is straight above. Right. We're 41 degrees. Yeah. We're 41 degrees above the equator. Right. So if we and just keep going down. To, to the equator. To the equator. Where is the North Star? Where did it go? I'm asking you. Because um, we're at zero right. now. And so what should be the elevation of the North Star? Should be zero. Fine. It's on the horizon. Correct. Oh, wow. Correct. That's terrible. It just is. Yeah, but oh, it looks bad. I know, I know, I know. So now watch. So now watch. The reason why I'm dragging you through this is if your latitude is the elevation of the North Star, from England, the Big Dipper, which circles the North Star as Earth rotates, just makes this big arc around the North Star, and no one is thinking of it as dipping. But we are farther south than... Great Britain, so the entire pattern of stars is lower on the sky, and there's the Big Dipper and coming it down. And actually makes a little. It, and it kisses the horizon. It, you can still see the whole thing right. from our latitude, and it comes back up, and it just dips down and comes back up. Right. So dip is not a thing. When they see the Big Dipper, they're not thinking right. it's dipping. No, exactly. Right. It's still hanging in the pot rack. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's stuff, not, it hasn't come down to the stove. It hasn't come down to the stove. The, right. It's just hanging in the pot rack above. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So we have these seven stars. They're approximately equal brightness. Okay. That's why it's very easy to, to notice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You will notice the Big Dipper before you will notice the North Star. Oh, okay. Because I've done this experiment. I asked people in the street, what's the brightest star in the night sky? Everybody says the North Star. Everybody says the North Star. Everybody. Without ever thinking... Why should the North Star be the brightest star? That would be an interesting coincidence if that were the case. The star that happens to be above Earth's rotation axis is the brightest star in the night sky? Please. The universe is not that kind. The North Star is not even in the top 10. Right. Not in the top 20. Yeah. It's not in the top 30. Wow. It's not in the top 40. Oh. <laughs> it's getting worse and worse. It's the 49th brightest star. The 49th yes. brightest star in the night sky Correct. is the North Star. Is the North Star. And most people think that it's Venus is the North Star. Right, when they see it. When they see it. Right, even they though they're, Venus they're looking the due star. west or due east, because right. it's right after where, or before where the sun was, and they think that's the North they Star. They think that's the North Star. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. I've, yeah. I, I just, 
<laughs> I don't know what to do about it. Okay. All right. So don't ever expect a North Star to find you. Right. You got to find the North Star. All right. So you're going to see the Big Dipper well before you'll notice the North Star. So next, what you want to do is take the lip of the Big Dipper. All right. Okay, right. With the two stars at the at the edge of the pot. Right. And then draw a line through them. And is it maybe five of those units? You'll get to a star which is pretty isolated in that part of the sky. That's the North Star. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, it sounds pretty unremarkable. It's unremarkable. And it's noticeable once the Big Dipper points to it, only because as dim as it is, there's nothing that rivals it in a wide area surrounding it. Ah. So. It, gotcha. Yeah. Right. It, it's so it's kind of like Dean Cain at a really small town cocktail party. Not a very big star, but everybody's kind of okay to look at them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is outstanding in its own field. Yeah. Yes, there it is. It's like, yeah, you know, the biggest guy here is the dude who does the news in another city. That's our <laughs> biggest star. <laughs> now we got Dean Kane at a cocktail party. This is unbelievable. <laughs> All right. So the North Star is not exactly above Earth's North Pole. Oh. That right. would be weird if it were. Because Earth is just orbiting the sun, tipped on its axis. Correct. I was going to say we're 23 degrees this or way. 23 anyway. and a half degrees. Right. Tipped. Right. Okay. We're just lucky there happens to be a star sort of near the exact North Pole. Gotcha. Okay. You can fit one or two full moon diameters between the North Star and the exact pole on the sky. That's how far away it is. So when I was a kid, I took a long exposure photo of the North Cap. I think it was like 14 when I did this, set it up on a tripod, did it, and I come back and the exposure was long enough that you can see the arc of the North Star tracing around some other point where there is no star. Wow. There it is. These two stars in the lip of the Big Dipper don't exactly point to the North and Star. And they don't even point yeah, to them. So it's, you have to fake it a little. Gotcha. Okay, if you look at maps that draw them, they have to like right. fake it. Okay. By the way, because the Big Dipper doesn't set, it only dips. Dips. No matter the time of night, no matter what night of the year, if it's clear, the Big Dipper it's is visible. visible. From 30 degrees north on, on up. up. That's cool. That's cool. That's a cool thing. That's why That's I, don't a great little I don't have to stargazing say, tip. wait until the spring or wait until the fall. Right. It's, if you go too far south, like on the equator, like you said, the North Star is on the equator. Right. So every star in the sky rises and sets because it arcs around the North Star. Wow. But as you come north and the North Star inches its way higher in the sky, anything between it and the horizon dips. Nice. And so that whole set of stars that never sets, there's a word for those, called circumpolar stars. Nice. A whole word for that. Circumpolar yeah. stars. So the Big Dipper is a circumpolar, well, it's an asterism. We think of it as a constellation, it's not. Um, okay. It's, you know what an asterism is? No. It's the more interesting subset of stars than the full constellation itself. That makes sense. That's All right? kind of cool. So the Big Dipper are the seven brightest stars of the constellation Ursa Major. Right. So it's a big bear. That's what they said. <laughs> yeah. I do not see a bear. It's a bear, and the four stars in the pot are its body. Right. And then the three stars in the handle are the big bushy tail. Right. And it's a big old Arctic bear. Yeah. Okay? Dipper I see. Bear I don't. <laughs> and... Bears don't have tails. Right. Exactly. So that's the cost of connecting the dots. Yeah. So it's probably an otter that somebody <laughs> thought was a tiny bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bears, they got little nubby yeah, things. They got a little nub. No, no, but yeah. not a whole bushy tail. Right. But they're drawn that way. Here's why I'm telling you all this. The middle star of the handle of the Big Dipper. It's not just one star. Right. It's two it's, stars. Oh, it's two stars? It's two stars. You can, if you have good eyesight, you can see them. You can see the stars. It's called Miser and Alcor. Miser and Alcor. Miser with a Z and right. Alcor. Miser and a Alcor. Any star that has an A-L in it, it's typically an Arabic name. That's cool. Very typically. A-L is, the, is a the right. in Arabic. Right. And, and they have a lot of thes, the way the French have a lot of thes. Right. You know, la this and la, la that. La, la. <laughs> la, la, la. Miser and Alcor, two very close together stars. Right. And from the Arabic, it's horse and rider. Ah, Miser and Alcor. That's cool. That's that's, that's that's a great name that's for a good, two stars that close. Exactly. Okay, okay, I like it. It is said that in ancient Rome, if you could detect that there were two stars, that you had good enough vision to serve in the Roman army. Oh, wow. Now, take out your binoculars. All right. Miser, the brighter of the two, is itself a double star. Okay. Now, take out a telescope. 
All right. And each of the two stars in Miser are themselves double stars. Oh, snap. So it's a double, double, double star system. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. That's a reason by a telescope right there. In fact, one of the earliest uses of statistics in the 19th century, when telescopes were trained on the sky, people started making catalogs, they noticed that too many stars were close to each other. Mm -hmm. Given the distance between that star and others, are these chance juxtapositions? You can calculate the chances of that many stars that close together if it's just the random placement of stars in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. If you do the statistics on that, it is way improbable that you would have stars aligning that way by accident. Thus, it was concluded that these are double stars. Wow. It was the first evidence of orbiting objects outside of the solar system. Wow. Then, once we had a sense of the mass of what they are, and some, you wait long enough, you can see them orbit, it was evidence that Newton's laws of gravity worked outside of the solar system. Double star systems. Look at that. In the galaxy. That's very cool. And Miser is sort of a double with Alcor. It's been debated whether they're a chance double or whether they actually orbit each other, but they certainly feel each other's gravity. So we'll give it to them. Okay. <laughs> there it is. That's kind of cool, man. It's a little bit of star, star chat. I like it. I'm an old timey stargazer. Yeah. Bought my first telescope walking other people's dogs. 50 cents per dog per walk. Nice. The golden age of dog walking. When you could let your dog poop on the street. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody said a thing. Nobody said anything. <laughs> uh. so, uh, so, yeah, I think about the night sky often. Anytime I walk out at night from any meeting, party, whatever, the first thing I do is keep looking up. Oh. <laughs> Nice. You see what I did there? I see what you did there. <laughs> All right, catch you next time.